Blessings to you. I'm Ruben Abante. Welcome to the pulpit. Let me turn you over now to the sanctuary of the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. And may you be blessed with the preaching of the Word of God. Thank you, choir. That is our kind of faith. It's worth telling. It's worth sharing. No? And we can always say we can go and win each one. 
No? And each one of us should win one actually. At yan ay mat ginagawa ng matatapat ng mga mananampalataya. You're watching the pulpit over the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church uh, television natin and you've just seen our the Light Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church choir. We'll get to our message today. I'd like to invite you now to stand please and open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2 and we will be reading verses 1 down to verse 10. Sa aklat po ng Epeso, Ephesians, kapitulo 2 at babasahin natin magmula versikulo 1 hanggang versikulo 10. Okay? Sana ay dala ninyo ang inyong mga Bibles and you can refer this. We always refer to the King James Bible whenever uh, we have our services and whenever we preach the word. Ito po ay sulat ni Apostle Paul sa mga mananampalataya sa church doon sa episode. And he writes them the following words. And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together in Christ. By grace, or hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Manalangin po tayo. Our Heavenly Father, we ask now that you'd bless this message. Lord, give us understanding na kahit Panginoon, kung mahirap man parang intindihin ang mensaheng ito, ay mauunawaan namin ang pinaka-basic na bagay na napakadakilang pagpapala ang masabing Kami ligtas. Kami iyong mga anak. At napakadakilang pagpapala, Panginoon, na kami ay iyong gawain that we may be called a New Testament church. It's a blessing, dear God. And help us, Lord, to realize this and value this, dear God. For we are your people. And we honor you and we praise you for this. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may please be seated. Sa pasimula ng ating services sa umagang ito ay inawit natin ang mga lumang awit, yung mga hymns na ang title ay Saved, Saved. No? Ibig sabihin ay tungkol ito sa kaligtasan na nakay Kristo Jesus. Now, sa atin pong mga mana ng palataya, ang isa sa pinakadakilang nangyari sa atin ay yung bang tayo'y naligtas. Masasabi niyo ba na totoo sa inyong kalooban na kayo'y ligtas? Oh. Now, come on now. Can you say an, an amen, a hearty amen on that? Oh, yes. Napakaganda na makapag-profess ang bawat tunay na kristyano, ako ay ligtas. Sa mga panahon po ngayon, ay hindi nyo masyadong maririnig ang term na saved. Ang palagi nating maririnig, born again. 
Minsan tuloy, akala nila ang pagiging born again at yung pagiging saved ay magkaibang word. Hindi po. Okay? Ang bawat saved ay born again. Ang bawat born again ay saved. Kung ikaw ay born again, but you cannot say that you're saved, you're not born again. Maliwanag po sana yun. Okay? Ang pagiging born again po ay hindi dahil kasapi ka ng isang community o fellowship o church o kaya kung anong samahan. Okay? Ang pagiging born again ay ibig sabihin, ikaw ay ipinanganak sa pamilya ng Diyos. Okay? Sa pamilya ni Kristo. Sa John chapter 3, maliwanag po na eh, sinasabi ng Panginoon yan kay Nicodemus when he said, ye must be born again. Ang pagiging born again ay hindi yung nagbago ka lang ng sistema sa buhay. Yung bang nasa alika dito, napunta ka ng Bible study, born again ka na. No. Ang pagiging born again ay may involvement ng pananampalataya, pagtanggap kay Kristo bilang tagapagligtas at Panginoon, pagkilala na ikay makasalanan at may kapahamakan. Okay? Yun din ang ibig sabihin ng save. Kung kaya palagi nating mas binibigyang timbang yung saved, ay sapagkat pag sinabing ligtas, meron kang pinanggalingan, niligtas ka sa kung saan. Ang pagiging ligtas po dahil kay Kristo, ay hindi pagiging ligtas dahil naligtas ka mula sa aksidente. O kaya naman ay naligtas ka mula sa kanser. Are you listening? Hindi tayo naligtas dahil hindi tayo namatay nung panahon ng hapon. No. Hindi tayo naligtas dahil uh, hindi tayo kasama sa mga nahulog sa bangin. No, 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 no. Ang ibig sabihin sa atin ng kaligtasan ay naligtas tayo sa kapahamakan. May kapahamakan ba? Itinuturo po ng banal na kasulatan na mayroong walang hanggang kapahamakan. Ganun? Hindi ba malas lang yun? No, it's not. Kung kaya nga, ang mensahe natin sa umagang ito, sa Ingles ay, it's a blessing to be saved and to be His people. Dito po sa Lighthouse, hindi natin tinuturing na ang pagiging bahagi ng Lighthouse ay pabigat sa buhay. Oy. Tama po ba? Hindi natin tinuturing na ang pagparito-rito o pagiging involved sa gawain ng Panginoon ng Lighthouse ay isang bagay na nakaiinis o istorbo o kaya naman e eh, aksaya sa oras. Sapagkat marami na pong mga tao ngayon and while they say they're Christians, they actually do not enjoy coming to this kind of of services. In fact, hanggat maaari, iklian ang mensahe. Iklian ang service. Sapagkat kung mahaba, sobra na yan. Hindi na blessing yan. Tama po ba? Pero, pagkakain ka sa restaurant, ang tagal mo kayang kumain. Tama? Kung kukuha ka ng loryat, nakuubusin mo pa at lahat ng putahe ay titikman mo. Mahaba ang dalawang oras. Tama po ba? Kung manonood ka ng sine, abay lalo na. Tama po ba? Pero bakit kaya nakapagpupunta dito sa church, you know, and you will hear God's message, abay sobrang na yun. 15 minutes lang, pastor. Sobrang na yung 15 minutes. Parusa na yan. Blessing ba talaga maging mana ng palataya? Blessing bang maging born again? Blessing bang maging safe? Blessing bang maging church? Ay blessing po, pastor. Lalo na kapag nagsasayawan tayo, 
Lalo na kapag nagtatalunan tayo, lalo na kapag may praise and worship. Blessing yan. Pero pag nagpipraise ka na at tinatamaan kami, parusa na yan, hindi na blessing yan. Ayaw namin nun. Ganon din po yung attitude ng mga pariseyo nung narinig nilang mag-preach ang Panginoon. Do you realize this? Ganon din ang attitude ng mga tao nung narinig nilang mag-preach si Apostol Pablo. We're listening? Hindi na po bago yun na ang preaching ay hindi sikat kasi hindi blessing. Okay? Kung magagawa ko ang magagawa ko, kahit kristyano ako, yun ang maganda. Pero, kung tuturuan mo ka ng kristyanismo at pipigilan mo kung gumawa kung ano ang gusto kong gawin, hindi blessing yan. Kaya uso na po ngayon, yung maging kristyano ka, pero, wag mong papakailaman ang buhay ko. Gusto ko maging kristyano the way I want to be Christian. Not according to this word. Kung pipigilan mo ako, I'd rather not be a Christian. I will just be born again. Magulo. Ano po? Kaya alam nyo, pag pupunta kayo sa lighthouse, hindi madali. Madaling pumunta sa mga kung saan mayroong service at maganda at marami ang tao. Pero kung kakauntit, kakapiranggot, wag na lang, hindi blessing yan. It's not a blessing to be alone. It's not a blessing to be few. It's a blessing when you're many. Kaya ang tao, gusto yung maramihan palagi. Kung pupunta ka sa isang gawain at kakapiranggot lang kayo, wag yan. Mas blessing yung marami. Mas blessing yung sikat. Mas blessing yung komportable ka. Mas blessing yung may concert. Pupunta ako sa church pag may concert. Pero kung choir, lalo na yung music, parang punebre, wag na lang. Ano ba naman yung kantang save, save? Save by the blood of the crucified. Ano naman yan? Minsan inaawit natin yung kantang uh, when we all get to heaven. Ay, pampatay lang yan. Kayo mga Kristiyano, pampatay lang kayo. Now listen, sometimes I ask, Ano ba talaga ang blessing? Do this, does this world know what real blessing is? Let me ask you, what really is a blessing? Blessing po ba yung pansamantala na magandang pakiramdam? O mas blessing yung alam mong eternal ang value ng meron ka? Blessing ba? Yung gumaling ka lang sandali, pero you do not have eternal security ng kaluluwa mo. What is a blessing? What is real blessing? Alam niyo po, after I arrived sa San Francisco and coming from the east, from east coast, dumating kami ni Melda ng San Francisco airport. It was about 11.30 in the evening. Sinundo kami ni Hernes sa airport. At sabi ko, Tol, paglabas sa airport, ang unang pupuntahan natin, in and out. Alam niyo kasi, sa California, mayroong burger house na ang pangalan ay in and out. Naku, sinabi ko sa inyo. Pag in ko yung double-double, pambihira, sabi ko. Okay to. Anyway, so pumunta kami, dumating kami ng in and out, siguro mga alas 12 pasado, mag una dahil inantay pa namin yung aming bagay. And so we entered. Mabuti na lang at nagsasarayata sila mga alas 2 ng umaga. Okay? And normally, we would go to in and out yung malapit sa San Leandro. Pero dahil sabi ni Pastor Hernes, abe, kung gusto mo pumunta ng in and out, puntahan na natin yung pinakamalapit sa airport. O sige, so it was near San Francisco Airport. So, we came in. It was about 1 o'clock in the morning. Pagpasok ko ng in and out, nagulat ako sa itsura ng mga tao. Sabi ko, anong klase mga tao nandito? Noong araw, pag pumupunta ako sa Amerika, abay, medyo 
Pero ang nakita kong uri ng mga naroon sa loob ng burger house na yon iba itsura. Magulo buhok nila, nakatayo, kung ano-ano mga itsura ng buhok. As in, walang kahit na nung, well, lahat ng mga tao nandun mga kabataan, puro mga tato, mga naka-short pants and everything. At, wow! It's, it's a crazy world here. Sabi ko, ibang klaseng grupo ito, no? Kesa sa grupo doon sa malapit sa, oh, kasi San Francisco ito. Talagang matindi ang atmosphere dito. Yung bang matatakot ka na, well, wow. And they enjoy this. You know, and I observe yung mga kababaihan doon, yung mga, well, it's, I cannot, I, I wish I could describe. Yung bang, I would be in there, kakain ako, pero I would actually feel like para ba akong stranger. Yung bang, I would be the one that would be out of this world. You know, iba na po ang itsura. And it is true. Kahit na anong itsura, abay sa atin dito, we come to Lighthouse. Ako, whenever I preach, ito po ang uniforme ko. Hindi dahil mayaman po tayo. We just want to dignify, you know, our being here. Okay? Sapagkat, well, I can preach in t-shirt, I can preach in maong or what, but I'd rather not do it. Why? Because it's a blessing to be different. It's a blessing to be saved. It's a blessing to be an ecclesia. And I need to preach this because people today do not actually know what real blessing is. Papaano po naging blessing ito? Let's refer to the Word of God. And let the Word of God define to us what real blessing is. Kasi po, kung ipapaubaya natin sa ating mga kaisipan kung ano ang real blessing, kung swerte lang, well, you can ask the Chinese. Okay? Kung fortune lang, well, you can ask the fortune teller. Pero kung blessing ang pag-uusapan, it's a biblical term. Hindi po magagamit ng kahit na anong tao ang word of blessing kung hindi nahahayag dyan sa banda na kusulatan. Ibig sabihin, the word blessing is a biblical term. Okay? Fortune is not a biblical term. Suerte is not a biblical term. Nagkikinig ba kayo? And I am not saying, I am very fortunate I'm saved. By chance, no. It is a blessing. Now, let's talk about what we are. I talk to you and I refer to you as God's people. If you are part of Lighthouse, definitely you should be saved. And you should know you're saved. Definitely you should be born again. And you should know that you're born again. Amen. Sana po walang member ng Lighthouse na hindi niya alam. Ay, say pala ako. Hindi ko alam ah. No. Okay? And you are saved eternally. That is how we are. Meron tayong assurance. Hindi po nawawala ang ating kaligtasan. We are not born again today and be unborn tomorrow. We are not born again and again and again and again and again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is a Spirit. And when we're born in the Spirit, it's definite. It's a one-time transaction. I hope that's clear. Okay? Now, look at verses 4 to 7 of Ephesians 2. Ito po ang sinasabi ni Apostle Pablo. And I say it again, let the word of God define what real blessing is. Sapagkat kung tayo ang pag-uusapan, kung tayo ang iiwan para mag-define ng blessing, naku, maraming definition. Baka sabihin natin, blessing is looking like Pastor Abante. No, hindi po. Di ba? 
Okay. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Kung tatagalugin po natin, sapagkat ang Diyos na napakayaman sa kagandahang loob, sa kaniyang dakilang pag-ibig, na dahil dyan, inibig niya tayo. Na samantalang tayo patay sa kasalanan, hiwalay sa kaniya dahil sa pagkakasala, ay binigyan niya ng buhay. Quickened us. Binigyan niya ng buhay kasama ni Kristo. At sa pamamagitan ng kanyang biyaya, tayo ay naligtas. Oh, that is a great statement. Amen? Na sa pamamagitan ng kanyang biyaya, tayo ay nangaligtas. At hindi lang yan. Ano ang sabi niya? And hath raised us up together. At tayo'y itinaas niya. Okay? Itinaas niyang magkakasama together. And made us sit together in heavenly places. At hindi lang tayo'y itinaas niya, kundi tayo'y nilukluk niya sa lahat ng mga pagpapala, sa kalangitan, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, upang sa mga susunod pang lahi, sa susunod pang mga panahon, anong gagawin niya? He might show the exceeding riches of His grace, na ipahahayag niya sa atin ang kayamanan at higit pang yaman ng kanyang biyaya at kagandang, kagandahang loob na nakay Kristo Jesus. Alam niyo po, kung nananamin natin ang sinasabing ito, medyo malalim, yes. Kaya nga, we need to study. We need to look at God's Word upang maalaman natin. You see, we're not Christians according to the teachings of this world. We are not born again according to science. We are not saved according to some human decrees. Are you listening? We are saved because of what this book says. Now, look at Ephesians chapter 2 verses 19 to 22. Ano po ang sabi? Napakaganda na sinasabi ni Paul dito. And again, he was talking to the church in Ephesus much like what we are as a church. And any church for that matter, maaaring kayo ngayon nanonood sa service na ito, sa preaching na ito, and you are part of an ecclesia. This also applies to you. Anong sinasabi ito ni Paul? Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. Hindi na kayo mga stranghero. No? Hindi na kayo mga alien. Hindi na kayo mga foreigners. Subalit, ano lang ka tayo? But fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Now, that is a blessing. To be called a household of God. Look at verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. At tayo itinalaga, tayo itinayo sa pundasyon sa haligi na mga apostoles at mga propeta, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth an holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Pastor, ang hirap intindihin yan. Huwag na lang nating pag-aralan yan. O hindi ba? Kaya po maraming mga mananampalataya, hindi nila ma-realize na pagiging na blessing ang pagiging tunay na mananampalataya, blessing ang pagiging ligtas, blessing ang pagiging church because they do not study God's Word. Come on now. Do you want to be blessed? What do you want to be blessed with? Oh, I want to be blessed 
na ako'y blessed na makapunta ng mga lugar, iiwan mo rin yan. Alam niyo po, I shared a video na ginawa namin ni Nair doon sa Yosemite. Wow, what a place. How many of you have gone to Yosemite? Alam ko sila, Pastor Peter, napunta na doon. Sino pa mga napunta na sa Yosemite? It's a national park. So Tony, have, oh, what a beautiful place. I have some good pictures. I can show that to you tonight. Sabi ko kay Nair, Nair, let's do a video. Babatiin ko yung mga taga lighthouse. Okay? Pumwesto ka dito. So ipinwesto ko yung aking camera. Handheld, wala akong tripod na dala. Sabi ko, Nair, dumungaw ko lang na ganyan, tapos itutok mo sa akin, magsasagita ako. Okay? Opo, pastor. Sige. Sinampo lang ko muna siya. Bumati din siya. Tapos ako naman na magvi-video. Natagalan yung pagsasalita ko, nangangawit na pala siya. Okay. Pero kung nakita niyo yung post, what a big, alam niyo, para bang backdrop yung likod ko ng isang napakagandang painting. Such a beautiful place. You know, I didn't realize na habang kami pumapasyal-pasyal doon, syempre maraming mga puno and everything, eh doon po spring, kaya maraming pollen. Syempre, langhap ka ng langhap, right? Uwi na kami, balik kami doon sa bahay ni Nair, natulog kami nung gabi, nakarating yata kami mga 9 o'clock, kumain, tapos natulog na ako. Kinabukasan, nagluluha ako. I had allergy. Tulo ang luha, tulo ang sipon. Ayan, medyo bingi ako ngayon. Eh, meron pa naman akong bilateral meringotomy. Ayan. Kaya, anyway, hindi blessing. Pambihira. Yun pala yun. Alam niya, ang tunay na blessing ay walang halong sabit. Kikinig ba kayo? Yan ang meron kay Kristo. Anyway, ang sabi dito ni Paul, hindi na ikatayo mga foreigner. Hindi na tayo mga stranger. Have you ever felt like being a stranger? Naku, ayaw natin yan. Tama? Yung bang nangungulila ka, para kang hmm. Meron akong picture dyan sa aking outline. Eh. Nakita mo ba, Edwin? Ha? Wala nga lang tayong LED rito eh. Pero sige nga, pakita mo nga yung picture ko sa outline. Kasi pumunta kami sa isang lugar Nakita niyo ba yung picture na yan? Yan. Ano palagay niyo? Gwapo ba? Ha? Oh. Kinunang ko yan. Pumunta kami sa, doon sa Subic. Nakita namin yung mga iba't ibang hayop dyan. Ayan. Yan tayo nung araw, mga kapatid. <laughs> Totoo, pastor. Oh. Sabi ng isang awit, I'm no kin to the monkey, the monkey's no kin to me. I don't know how, I don't know much about his ancestors, but mine never swang from a tree. Amen. Hindi tayo galing dyan. Pero alam niyo, ang pagiging blessing, eh higit pa sa kung anong itsura natin. Nasaan ba yung hayop niyan? Nasa likod ng kulungan. Tama ba? Now, well, yan tayo ngayon, mga kapatid. As an ecclesia, as people of God, as saved, marami po tayong mga pribilehyo. At kung ano mga pribilehyo, kinakailangan natin maunawaan, pag-aralan, ma-realize, and value according to God's word. Kung tayo lang po ang magsasama, hindi natin maintindihan. We need God's Word for us to understand how a blessing it is to be saved. Nakikinig po ba kayo? Let me be very straightforward here. Para at least alam natin lahat. Okay? Kung wala po ang pag-aaral at katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos, hindi natin maintindihan that it is a blessing to be saved. Kung mababaw tayo sa salita ng Diyos, lalong hindi mo maintindihan that it is a blessing to be saved. Kung wala tayong pagvavalue 
into what we are as a church, hindi natin maiintindihan that to be a church is a blessing. Tama? So the key is God's word. Now, we need to remember where we came from. Maaaring ngayon, masaya tayo, we enjoy each other's company, kung magsasama tayo, well, maganda. But look at Ephesians 2, 11 to 13. Ano ang sabi ni Paul? Wherefore, remember. You know, we need to have some sense of remembrance. Okay? Tama po ba? Anong sabi ni Rizal? Ang hindi marunong lumingon sa pinanggalingan ay may stiff neck. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Well, referring to the Jews. That at the time, ye were without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Such a privilege. Pero madalas po, ayaw nating pag-aralan ito kung anong value nito. Kasi ang alam lang natin, pray your, read your Bible, pray every day. No, the challenge is not that. Lahat po tayo may pinanggalingan. May pinanggalingan tayong buhay. May pinanggalingan tayong kalalagyan. May pinanggalingan tayo na kung saan tayo niligtas. Tama po ba? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Ang sabi ni Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, he says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of mankind, abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Are we reading this? Palagay ko po, lahat tayo ay mayroong ganitong kategorya. Tama po ba? At ang sabi ni Paul, verse 11, and such were some of you. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now, what am I driving at? Sa umagang ito, ang pag-usapan po natin, eh kung ano ang kalalagyan natin sangayon sa paningin ng Panginoon sa kanyang salita bago tayo naligtas. Sapagkat kung hindi natin titingnan kung ano tayo bago tayo naligtas sa mata ng ating Panginoon, hindi natin maiintindihan na blessing palang maligtas. Tama po ba? Parang yung ano yan eh, yung isang bata na angal siya ng angal na wala siyang sapatos. Akala niya na siya na ang pinaka pinaka unfortunate na nilalang sa mundo dahil wala siyang sapatos. Until nakakita siya ng isa pang bata na walang paa. You realize what I'm saying? Kinakailangan makita natin in the light of God's word kung bakit blessing yun. Now, unang-una, what were we? You know, 
We need to see every sinner as how God sees the sinner. Hindi natin lubos na alam kung gaano tayo pagigi kung gaano ang ating kasalanan maliban na ang Diyos ang magsabi sa atin kung anong klase tayong makasalanan. Sapagkat kung tayo lang sasabihin natin, ay hindi ho naman ako makasalanan ng higit. I am not a sinner like him. Tama po ba? Sapagkat nature natin mag-rationalize is our defense mechanism. Tama? Oh. Baka sabihan ka, alam mo ang pangit mo. Ay hindi naman masyado. Mas pangit yun. Ah. Oh. But let us see ourselves the way we were as sinners from the perspective of God. Let's go back to our text. Ang sabi sa ating text, ang sabi, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Number one, nung tayo'y hindi paligtas, okay? Sa harap ng Panginoon, we were dead in trespasses and sins. Dead. Tayo'y patay. Now, sa banal na kasulatan po, ang word na dead, ang ibig sabihin ay separated. Okay? You understand? Hiwalay. Separated. We were not in union with God. We were separated from God because of our sin. At ang sabi dito ni Paul, we were dead in trespasses and sins. Ano ang ibig sabihin ng trespasses? Okay, bago yan. Yung pagiging dead, na ang ibig sabihin hiwalay, ay para tayo nakahiwalay sa Diyos na ang ating kalalagyan, have you, have you ever heard of the word quagmire? Ang ibig sabihin po ng quagmire ay parang kumunoy, ay soft soil na nandun ka. At ikaw ay lumulubog at walang tumutulong sa'yo at walang gustong pumunta sa kalalagyan mo. We are so separated from Him and we are separated like we were in a quagmire. You understand? Okay. Now, we were separated because of our trespasses. Ano ibig sabihin ng trespasses? Pag tayo po ay nagtetrespass, meron tayong ginagawa. A trespass means an activity. Tama po ba? Nakakita na ba kayo ng sign? No trespassing. When you trespass, anong gagawin mo? You act. Tama? You cross. We were separated in all our activities. Ibig sabihin, ang lahat ng ating pagkilos ay pagkilos na hiwalay sa Diyos. Okay? Kilos na walang kinalaman ang Diyos. Kilos na malayo sa Diyos. Kahit mabait tayo. Subalit wala si Kristo sa atin. Ang lahat ng ating pagkilos, kahit sabihin natin sang ayon sa ating kabaitan, hiwalay din po yan sa ating Diyos. Ang kahit na anong kabaitan o righteous na sa ating gawin are but filthy rags before God. We already fall short of all what we can do because we're separated from God. We cannot do an activity that God can approve. Come on. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng trespass. Ano naman ang ibig sabihin ng sins? Yung kasalanan po has something to do with character, with attitude, and with condition. Okay? Sapagkat hindi naman tayo kumikilos dahil lang napwersa po tayo. Ibig sabihin, kumikilos tayo and we trespass. You know why? Because we're sinners. We're separated from God. Okay? Naroon ang ating pinakakatatayuan. We did not just commit sin, but we are sinners ourselves. Kung kaya nga po, whenever we come to God, we admit to God that we're sinners. We do not simply admit that we've done wrong. Are we listening? Ang pagkilala po at pag-admit sa Panginoon, eh hindi yung, Lord, sorry ha, gumawa ako ng mali. No, 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 no. 
ang sinasabi ng atin sa Panginoon ay ito, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Meron tayong ganong pagkilala. Kaya po, ang pananampalataya kay Kristo, hindi yung, Lord, sorry, meron ako narinig eh, tinawag si Panginoon na Jess, Jess, sorry ha, yun lang, save na ako. That's not the way to be saved. Because unless you admit that you are a sinner before God, you know, alam niyo po, yung may sakit, inaamin na may sakit siya. Kaya kailangan ng doktor. Tama? Anong ginagawa ng doktor? Inaalam ang pinakadahilan ng sakit, Right? So we are sinners before God. When we were dead in trespasses, sabi ng banda na kasulatan, for all have sinned and come short. Ang lahat ng ating pagkilos, ang ating karakter, ang ating attitude, ang ating condition, lahat ay separated at hiwalay at walang kinalaman ang Diyos. Ano pa ang ating description? Number two. Look at verses 2 to 3. Ano sabi? Wherein in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world. Lumakadi ka tayo ayon sa direksyon ng mundong ito. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Now, ano po yung walk? Kanina may trespass, kanina may sin. Ano naman yung walk? Ang walk po ay lifestyle. Okay? At ang lifestyle natin, nung malayo pa tayo kay Kristo, wala tayo kay Kristo, ay lifestyle na hindi tayo makakawala. Observe. Kung hindi dahil sa kaligtasan kay Kristo, hindi tayo makapagbabago. Sa totoo lang po, ang mundong ito ay nagdidikta sa lahat ng ating lifestyle. Tama po ba? Hello? Totoo yun. At sa totoo lang, hindi ka makakakontra sa lifestyle ng dikta ng mundo. Subukan mong magsuot ka ng saya at maglakad ka sa Makati. Para kang weird. Kung halimbawa kaya, kunin ko yung aking double knit at yung kami sa dentro ko nung araw na bulaklaki na ganun kalaki kwelyo, at magsuot ka ng bell bottom. Anong tingin nyo sa akin? Okay? Sa totoo lang, ang lifestyle po ng mundong ito ay lifestyle na nagtatanikala sa bawat isa. Ang bawat isip, ang bawat mindset, ayaw mong mahuhuli sa trend ng mundo ipepwersa at ipepwersa sa iyo. Sa itsura mo, sa kilos mo, sa salita mo, sa amoy mo, tama ba? Sa ginagawa mo, sa ugali mo sa social media, sa kung paano mong ipresenta ang sarili mo, lahat ay lifestyle at dikta ng mundo. At wala tayo na kahit na anong kakayanan upang makakontra sa dikta ng mundo. Why? Sapagkat yan ang ating kalalagyan. Ang korupsyon, hindi ka makakasalungat. Ang kasinungalingan, hindi ka makakasalungat. Yan ang lifestyle ng mundo. Igigiit ng igigiit sa mana ng palataya at kung hindi ka mana ng palataya ng tunay, wala kang magagawa, kundi sumunod. Uso na 
ang kung ano mga immoral na mga relationships. Uso na ang hindi uso nung araw. Uso na ang mali nung araw na tama ngayon. Wala kang kawala sapagkat yan ang ating kalalagyan. Subalit kay Kristo, niligtas tayo mula doon. Kaya hindi ako naniniwala na ang tunay na Kristiyano ay pareho pa din ng itsura. Na ang tunay na Kristiyano pareho pa din ng gawa. Na ang tunay na mana ng palataya ay pareho pa rin ng andar ng utak. At ang tunay na mana ng palataya ay pareho pa din ng ginagawa ng araw. Why? Because we are new in Christ. It's a blessing. Dito po sa lighthouse, natuturo tayo that when you are truly saved, some changes should be seen in your life. Kahit ang musika, Are you listening? Ako, I appreciate music. Okay? I can sing contemporary songs. I can sing kahit yung sinasabi na lang praise and worship songs. Pero hindi ako aawit na ang aking pag-awit ay katulad ng pag-awit ng mundo. You know, some, pag tinanggal niyo po yung naririnig niyo at tiningnan niyo ang itsura ng kilos nila, hindi niyo makikilala kung magkaiba sila o pareho. Kikinig ba kayo? At hindi ako naniniwala na kinakailangan magkaroon ka pa ng smoke dito para mag praise and worship ka. Because that's the world. That's what, what the world does. You see, kahit sa emotion, we cannot rise from emotions sapagkat yan ang walking according to the course of this world. Ikatlo, what were we before we were saved? We were by nature the children of wrath. Verse 3, and were by nature the children of wrath. Well, nature, we are naturally, naturally children of wrath. Ibig sabihin, natural children of those outside of God. Alam niyo po, if we are natural children, may ilalabas at ilalabas tayo naturally. Hello? Ang mga anak ko, kahit na babae, some of them, you know, many of them will bring out something naturally drawn from my DNA. Tama ba? Oh. Drawn from kung ano ako. Si tatay nung araw, hindi mo maikakala na kami mga anak. Right? Mga skills. They are sin. Ganon din po. Yun ang kalalagyan ng wala kay Kristo. They are natural sinners. They do things naturally. And what comes natural? Look at what comes natural. 1 Corinthians 2.14 It says this, But the natural man receive it not the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, neither can he appreciate them, for the things of God are spiritually discerned. Yun ang ating kalalagyan. At sa lahat ng kalalagyan na ito, ito, ang medyo matindi. Nakikinig po tayo lahat? Ha? Our natural desires, lahat ng ating description na ito, ang willing and belief natin, just put us all in ever-increasing judgment before God. Lalong naiipon at naiipon at naiipon ang ating kapahamakan. Hindi po. Uh, hindi. Pastor, ang technology kasi tumataas, nagde-develop. No. Not our being sinners before God. Okay? 
Now, ano nangyayari? Look at Romans chapter 2, verse 5, and we will wind up with this. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Ang ating pong description, ang ating kalalagyan nung wala tayo kay Kristo ay lalong padagdag ng padagdag ng padagdag ang dapat nating kapahamakan. Walang pag-asa. Subalit, sa kahabagan, sa pag-ibig, sa kadakilaan ng biyaya ng Panginoon, tayo ay kanyang inabot. It's a blessing to be saved. It's a blessing to be a church. I'd like you to come back tonight. I will continue this message. But for now, basi po sa nakita natin description when we were outside of Christ. And bottom line, after all of what we've seen, we were in the past. It's a blessing to be saved. Let's value our being saved. Let's value our being Christians. Let's value our being in Christ. And if you are not saved today, come to Christ. There is no other way but Christ. Let's stand and pray. to you oh father holy is your name oh God help me Lord to worship forever and praise you sing of your
Thank you for having joined us today in this episode of The Pulpit, where we feature the services at the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. If you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, and you have not had the experience of God's saving grace, I invite you, let Jesus Christ come into your heart. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I receive you now into my heart as my Savior and as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And with that prayer, is the faith in your heart that the Lord Jesus Christ is in you as your Lord and Savior. God bless you today. Join us again next week for another edition of The Pulpit.